Today, we have Ben Ebers Ebrill representing the UK, going head to head with Mythical Kitchen's Josh in a UK versus USA food fight. And our incredible judge is Taste History host, Max Miller. Let's get it on. Right, I'm gonna go mm. first with the British yep. biscuit. A sweet, crisp, delicious thing that we dip into a cup of tea. I mean, the Brits eat more biscuits than any other nation. Mm. And what is not to love? Lots of varieties, but always sweet, sometimes with a filling and perfect to dunk. That is not a biscuit whatsoever. I'm gonna show you a real biscuit. Now this is a proper American biscuit. You know why it's a biscuit? Cause you can go down to Carl's Jr. You can get yourself two for three dollars. <laughs> and also biscuits, deep, deep history of tradition in the South. This is like a relatively American invention. Would y'all call it like a plain scone? Uh, I, I feel like it's a scone or a scone. It's, it's a quick bread that's made, it's leavened with sodium bicarbonate. It's got mechanical leavening from a ton of butter that is sitting in pockets there. It's flaky. It's buttery at the same time. But it's not a bis it's not a biscuit. Yeah, biscuit literally means twice cooked. Twice cooked in this. We is... stole it from the Italians, biscotti. Well, how many breakfast sandwiches can you get on there at Carl's Jr. in Britain? Uh, that's a good point. I mean, I mean, we're just we're just dunking. We're just happy to dunk. <laughs> I would call that a cookie. Do you use the term cookie for anything? Ah, uh, see, biscuit is like an umbrella term and does mm. like cover cookies, sandwich biscuits. Interesting. See, it's good, right? But that is still a biscuit. Yeah, this is lovely. We don't. I love little treats like these. I wish we had more of a little. I'm not going to call it a biscuit, but I wish we had more of a little fun treat culture in America like that. A cup of tea solves every problem mm. in the UK, and if it's served without a biscuit on the side, you get frowned upon. Hospitality is not complete without a little plate of biscuits. You know what? When I microwave my tea next time, I'll <laughs> dip one of these biscuits in it. The long and the short of it, the biscuit has a history long before Britain with biscotti. Literally, the Navy survived on these crisp biscuits. It was an essential part. Now we've sweetened them, they're absolutely delicious, and no cup of tea is complete without one. I'm gonna give you five reasons why these are called biscuits. Carl's Jr., McDonald's, <laughs> uh, Burger King, Chick-fil-A. Taco Bell had a biscuit taco that came out in 2017. You think that they were served on these? No, listen, America invented fast food and we vomited it all over the globe. This is now called a biscuit. Sorry, history lost out to commerce again. To be fair, all those brands are bigger than McBitties. <laughs> Your guys' arguments were persuasive. Not so persuasive. Yeah, listen, I, I mean, been... I grew up in America, so this was a biscuit to me, but I'm sorry, this yeah. is a biscuit because it does come from twice baked. Mm -hmm. And so I can see the connection there. This is just, this is delicious, but that's it. We make soggy biscuits with tea, you do it with gravy. Do you know what a soggy biscuit in America yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't it's just, it's just a, It's just a dippy thing, right? Okay, good. Should we move on to round two? <laughs> now that is some good old fashioned American Concord grape jelly. We call this jelly because it needs to be differentiated from jam and preserve. So jelly is when you take the fruit juice and you strain it, thicken it with sugar, and then use either like a gelatin or most likely a pectin if it's a fruit jelly that you would put on a sandwich. We decided that in preserves or jam, we didn't like all the fiber and all the actual fruit parts of it. So we strained all that out, threw it in the trash, and we're left with pure American jelly. And that's why this is called jelly. It's America's great. number one. Whereas for us, in Britain, that's a jelly. No way, get out of here. Wibble wobble, wibble wobble on the plate. That is jelly. It comes from the French gelée, which literally means to set, to congeal. We stole the word, we took it into jelly. It's an art form. And in Victorian mm. times, it was a way of showing class status. What have I told you, friend? That was called Jell-O. Jelly. <laughs> literally all, all of my arguments for the American versions of things are just gonna be, we may not have invented capitalism, but we sure perfected it, and especially <laughs> in the food space. Because literally, Jell-O is a name brand product started in 1897 in New York, and it was very much this like hopeful, we've used science to conquer God, we can now gel all our food and it can be in your own home. It is no longer a point of status to make jellies. <laughs> Which is why Jell-O shows up in all of these like 1950s space race era recipes because we democratize these formerly elegant and erudite and aristocratic processes. So that is now called Jell-O. Jell-O brought this to the masses and they should earn it. 
I mean, it's a fair point. <laughs> I feel like, sweet or savory, jelly is always gonna be this and not that. What do you call this? Do you have a name for this where you strain out all of the fruit parts? That's a jam. That's a jam, but a jam- Because you're jamming in as much fruit as you possibly can to preserve it. We don't have grape jelly. PB and J confused us for so long because we couldn't understand why you were putting jelly <laughs> into a peanut butter sandwich. Well, no, what we do with jelly, as you call it here, is we cut it into cubes and we mix it with either some combination of Cool Whip and or mayonnaise and or something we call pudding, and then we call it a salad. I don't know if- Jello you're salad. Familiar with that. Uh -huh. I'm not sure I need to be. Oh, <laughs> you got a lot to learn about America. Go to Minnesota, they'll educate you. All right, these uh, arguments were even more off, off the wall, but that's a jelly. This is also jelly to me, but <laughs> I can it says do it on this. the pole. I can I do this. It says, so. it says it right there. Because your your argument with jello mm. is that it's not necessarily jello, and this has just been around for a longer time. And jello is made for making shots. This is a jelly, <laughs> gelatin, it, it's all related. Though, yeah. you mentioned savory jellies. We need to stop that. That's that whole aspect cool. thing. I love it. Right? That's I not cool. It. No, you don't. I do. You put it on top of a pate, that little layer of the, you get that like right. If I hadn't in already a decided against your argument, <laughs> I would change my mind because shame on you, John. Slurp right, it up. Give me the meat jelly. <laughs> if you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video. Subscribe if you aren't. Click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. I'll kickstart it with chips. So whilst the reputation of like British food hasn't always been great, fish and chips is a status, right? It's a status symbol, it's been there forever, and it is fried battered fish and fried potatoes. The potatoes are chipped. The verb to chip, you, you create chips of potato and then fry them. So they should be a little bit soggy, they don't have to be super crispy. We're not talking French fries, we're talking chips, but they're the best. Simple as that. Do you believe that these are better than like a proper twice fried Belgian frites? Like you actually would stare me in the face and say that these English chips that you go, they're meant to be like this. <laughs> <laughs> you would actually say that these are better. Like, I, I, All I can fall back on is if it's gonna be a fried potato, it's the verb. It's again, it's the verb to chip. You chip a potato, so it has to be a chip. Okay, I would argue that these are actually properly chipped more so than those, and this has a fascinating origin story. I believe that potato chips are a uniquely American product. They were invented by George Crum in Saratoga Springs, New York. This has a fascinating myth behind it that probably didn't happen, but there was a uh, customer that was him off, kept saying, slice the potatoes thinner and thinner, and so he chipped and chipped and chipped away until they were these thin chips, fried them, customer loved them. And so I think that this is a more properly chipped chip than if you look at the origin of French fries, people will point out they're actually Belgian, but the term French does not mean the country. It refers to the knife cut because the French codified a ton of cooking. So it is actually a French cut potato, which is so much better than this, which is not even a chip. These are called potato wedges and KFC got rid of them because nobody wanted them. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm close to agreeing if it wasn't the fact that nostalgia and growing up with these mm -hmm. chips. The problem is these weren't chipped and chipped and chipped away. They were sliced. They're, they're, they're sliced, no, they're crisps, yeah. and then what they were you... cooked, so they're cri these are crisps, Are they using chips. like a hammer and cudgel to chip the <laughs> No, they're using a knife, these are sliced. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Potato chips, potato crisps, what about like a they're crisp. Chip? What is a paint chip to you? Like, paint oh, the chip? paint is chipping off the walls. Which shape more accurately describes the paint chip? <laughs> I suppose it depends on how many oh, layers I, of paint. <laughs> I got a centimeter thick wad of paint falling What about off. wood chips? Huh? <laughs> 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 All right, this is, this is, I mean, come on, you're, these are chipped, you chip with a chisel, these are sliced as well, how do you think these were made? Those are chips, also, just onomatopoetically, chip, those are a chip, they just, this is a crisp, they're crisp. not crisp at all, these are like, these are called gloms. I'm it's losing this based like, on onomatopoeia. It's like mashed potato that has been burst into a mold, no, those, first of all, Soggy potatoes in general. Yeah. Wrapped in newspaper with fish. You're not helping me. Under your <laughs> your fish and chips on a Friday under your arm. A touch of the old days with our soggy chips. I'm I sticking with it. them. <laughs> I think you're taking the win. 
Lead away. Here we have the delicious American invention of muffin. Um, I would like to stand on my soapbox here and I would like to phone in this round and give the win to him because I have my own point to pitch. These should not be called muffins. These should be called cupcakes. This is simply a delightful cake that has been baked inside of a cup and you can have frosted cupcakes and unfrosted cupcakes. Any unfrosted cupcake should be called a muffin. In fact, many of the best cupcakes are actually what we would call muffins. Muffins tend to be denser and moister and filled with delightful flavors where a lot of cupcakes are just made with mass produced ingredients. So I am urging America, Britain, everyone rally around each other to finally unite to call this a cupcake. Thank you, I rest my case. Also, we already have English muffins, it's our own thing. And you know what? We weren't hard finding them. We found plenty of English muffins here in LA. My problem is, this is also a muffin. It has Wait. the muffin top where it bakes and falls over the paper. We all have a good muffin top, it's mm -hmm. great, right? That is the signal of a great cake. It's stuffed with blueberries, chocolate chips, whatever you want, it's a quick bread. That is a muffin. This is an English muffin, and it is a small, round, slightly leavened bread. That's a crumpet. No, crumpet's got holes in and is yeasted. The, the muffin, do you know no, the muffin no. man? I do, oh yeah, he lives in Drury Lane. He absolutely Good does. Dude. And he goes around with a bell, because these were so popular at one point, the muffin men used to ring bells to let them know that he, they were in town to sell you the muffins, because no one had ovens in their homes, much like an ice cream van does today. And Parliament even tried to pass a bill to tell them to shut the bell up, because it was <laughs> everyone. So muffins have been around in Britain and especially uh, London for a long, long time on Drury Lane. That, however, is a sweet muffin and I'm also here for it. America invented Divided. the English muffin. Samuel Thomas in New York of Thomas English Muffins invented it and initially called it the toaster crumpet. As I say again, these are crumpets, despite them not looking the same or being cooked the same at all. That's what he tried to market them as. Every American said, what the hell is a crumpet? And he said, you know what a muffin is? And they said, like, maybe. And he's like, ah, it's English muffin. And so that is how English muffins were invented in America. I feel like we're, we're even we are divided on this, which is the muffin. We need mass. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the muffin. <laughs> I like your cupcake argument there. Thank you. Fun little fact. Mm. We went to school one mile down the road from little Moffitt's house. Wait, she's a real person. What? She lived, oh, what was the name of the road? Tuffet. Little Miss Moffitt. No, you're, but she sat on her. What? She sat on her top. Little Miss Moffitt sat on her toffet. Toffet. Eating her curds away. What was the road? What are you talking about? We went to school together. You walked down the same I road. I think this was a dream, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I still won the muffin round. Should we do down five? Where did you live in relation to Frodo? <laughs> <laughs> Just left of the Shire. Oh, okay. Hertfordshire. <laughs> Last one, once and for all. Would you like to do the honors? I would love to. What we have here, wiggly jiggly American pudding. Now you might say that is a custard. No, custard comes from French and it is typically set with egg. American pudding is set with starch and occasionally gelatin, similar to an Italian panna cotta. I, can't, I don't even know what's under there because y'all got 90 different things that you could have put under that, that they're cloche. But for us, we have cups of pudding and they are delightful. You can put rice in it, you can put tapioca in it, but at the end of the day, it is dairy that is thickened with some form of starch. And therefore always sweet? Yes, pudding, screw it, pudding is always sweet. Because it's the sweet savory thing that confuses me. Because we do have many puddings, but I think this was the first. Black pudding, mm -hmm. so from the French boudin, literally like pudding. We had the Great Fire of London in, 19, in 1666, and it happened on Pudding Lane. And Pudding Lane was where there was a, a tranche of, or a road, a track down to the Thames, and all the butchers would throw their offal out and it would make its way down to the Thames. Oh. It's all about offal, and this is blood pudding, uh, blood sausage, and that is one of our many puddings. What's like a delicious sweet treat you eat after a savory meal? That can also be a pudding, perhaps steamed, but it is sponge based. Is, no, no, but like pudding is an event, right? Like, oh, we'll, we'll take pudding. What are you having for pudding? Pudding can also be an occasion, correct. Or it can be a souffléed egg, flour, and milk mixture if uh -huh. you're from Yorkshire. Or it could, in fact, just be the basin that you cook the pudding in. There's, there's, there's or you could make it from suet. We have suet pudding too. That's kidney fat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this is That's the one it. I'm putting forward. This is the original. This is black pudding, offal based. Fro the Romans were making this stuff. Like, it's, it's, it's ancient old, and here we are still enjoying black pudding. The Romans wasn't calling it pudding. 
you know, the Romans were calling it whatever they called it. Like, I, I understand the etymological Something angle. Imagine, I imagine. And so I respect it, but to me, the definition is way too wide ranging for it to be meaningful outside of that specific in-group in the culture. This is pudding, slang chuck. <laughs> Okay, I have to stop this right there. <laughs> I can't go on so anymore. Um, all right, before this I make my be decision, I have some questions. Uh oh. Okay, mm -hmm. so a haggis is a pudding, mm -hmm. but so is awful steamed awful. So this is but awful. so is a steamed pudding that you'd have at school mm -hmm. lunch. Yep, with treacle on top. Yeah. Yeah. What would you call a sausage? That I mean, a sausage is a sausage, right? But how is a sausage very different from a black pudding? This has blood, which counts as awful, and therefore the butchers were getting rid of it down the track through pudding legs. Oh. But some sausages have awful in them as well. I go to a baseball game and I'm eating tubes of pudding inside my hot dog bun. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think because you got just too many uses for the yeah, word. Yeah, we've confused ourselves. We're going to go with this is pudding. Though I do like that uh, when English people say, I want some pud. Pud. I do enjoy that. Regardless of what they actually mean. <laughs> if someone came up to me and said, I want some put, I would think they were asking for something real different. It depends on where they come with a wink. <laughs> Pudding. Excellent. Well, you're the official adjudicator because you know everything when it comes to food and history, which is why right. Max is awesome. We're going to do some other videos with Max on the channel as well. Keep your eyes out for that. But a massive thank you, Josh, for competing in British versus American food terms. Are we any the wiser? Comment down below.